Well, let's put the spotlight on the banking sector. Crystal Ratings in their recent report states the return on assets for banks is projected to decline to 1.1 to 1.2 percent this fiscal from a 20-year high of 1.3% in FY24. Yet, it will remain above the long-term average of 0.75%. Krishnan Sita Raman, uh, who is the Senior Director and Chief Ratings Officer of Crystal Ratings, joins in now to discuss this report. Krishnan, welcome to the show. Um, well, you know, I just wanted to start by asking you, what is the reason for this return of assets to decline from this 20-year high in FY25? A very good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me on the show. Uh, see, uh, as you rightly pointed out, uh, the, the uh, ROA in our expectations, the return on assets for the banking system, uh, will uh, decline by around 10 to 20 basis points this fiscal. Uh, that said, it will still be well above uh, the 10-year average or the five-year average, whichever way you want to look at it. Now, uh, the, the, the key reason here is the fact that deposits of the Indian banking system, they are uh, gradually repricing themselves. Uh, usually what happens is when interest rates change, either moving up or coming down, deposits reprice with a lag, uh, which, is, which means that, which is because only the incremental deposits or the deposits which get renewed, those get repriced at the newer rates, while the older deposits deposits continue to uh, be contracted at the same rate uh, till they mature. Whereas on the lending book, when interest rates go up, the floating rates go up uh, uh, almost instantaneously. So uh, the, when interest rates go up, the lending uh, book uh, reprices upwards, deposit rates remains where it is. So when interest rates go up, the profitability of banks go up, goes up. And now what we are seeing is the deposit rates are catching up. So deposit rates uh, increases are building up into the cost of uh, borrowings, which is meaning that the NIMS, net interest margins, they will come down by around 10 to 20 basis points, which will translate into the return on assets metric. The other angle that we need to keep in mind is the credit costs. Credit costs in the banking system have been coming down steadily from around 2.5% in FY18 to around 0.6.5% in FY24. Uh, we don't believe there is much headroom for that to come down further. So credit costs coming down also benefits the profitability. And the credit costs have been coming down because the asset quality of the banks have been improving. Uh, GNPAs, uh, gross NPAs, have come down from around 11.2% as of March 18 to around 2.7% March 24. We expect some more uh, decline in uh, uh, NPA in the current fiscal. But credit costs, not much room to go down below. So not much offset to the impact on net interest margins coming down. Hence, uh, profitability will come down a shade to around 1.1%. Uh, Still, uh, it will be well above the historical average. Right. We take your point that, you know, there is downside risk to return on assets. Uh, just to press that a little further, because hmm. you expect NIMS to contract by about 10 to 20 basis points, deposits, deposit costs to increase by about 25 to 30 basis points, and some increase in credit costs as well. So why is it that then your estimates of ROA decline are limited to just 10 to 20 basis points? Cases in this scenario, it could decline by well over 40, 50 basis points in some cases. Uh, why is, is there an upside risk to the decline in uh, ROAs? No, so uh, uh, thanks for the query. Uh, actually, credit cost is not going to go up. It will marginally come down, but not much headroom for to come down materially. That's what I was saying. Maybe five bips, uh, it could come down uh, this fiscal, as we believe NPAs will continue uh, to come down. Uh, it's 2.7% as of March 24, may come down to around 2.5%. Not much headroom to come down further. So credit cost, marginal uh, decline. The other thing that you pointed about uh, is about the deposit costs uh, uh, going up. Deposit cost uh, uh, will go up. Uh, that said, uh, we, we are expecting interest rates in the environment to actually come down uh, in this from the second half of uh, this fiscal. So some element of that impact would also uh, get captured uh, into the overall in, uh, the net interest margin scenario. The other thing we need to keep in mind is the denominators of the deposits and the loan books are not similar. And while a deposit, incremental deposit rates may uh, uh, have, uh, we, we see those rates having been plateaued more or less. Uh, so what, what we talk about when we talk about uh, uh, deposit costs going up is the co stock cost of deposits, whereas the incremental deposit uh, rates may not go up much further from here. So 
it's an interplay of all these factors. It's not uh, such a simple translation about uh, NIMS uh, into ROA. So uh, uh, when you build in all those factors, uh, it is it is it's kind of a coincidence that uh, the ROA decline will also be around the 10 to 20 bips mark. Okay. So now we're talking about FI25, where you're not expecting that much of a further decline in terms of credit costs. You expect the gross NPs to largely see some kind of stability to marginal reduction. What happens in FI26? Uh, are any kind of projections when it comes to credit costs as well as gross NPs there? Uh, will it be just a plateau after FI25 or are you expecting a move up or down? Well, that's a very, very good question and uh, uh, difficult to kind of predict with uh, a great deal of accuracy uh, going beyond one year in the financial system. Uh, but what I will uh, talk about is the trend line that we have seen on the asset quality or NPAs. Uh, NPAs in the banking system have followed a cyclical path. There will be uh, uh, periods of time where it will go up and then periods of time which uh, where it will come down. But one thing what we have seen Years, is that the amplitude of the peaks of the NPAs, that has been coming down. What I mean to say is in the up cycle of NPAs in the mid-90s, uh, in 1994 or so, the highest level of gross NPAs was close to 25%. Whereas if you see the last up cycle of NPAs, March 18 to 2018, there, the high peak level of NPAs was 11.2%. So while the cycle of NPAs will come down and the NPAs will come down and go up, but the peaks of the NPAs are steadily coming down because of the structural improvements that we see in the banking system. Recently, we have the IBC coming on board, underwriting systems, risk assessment mechanisms have improved. So we do believe that uh, in time, this uh, uh, coming down of NPAs will hit a trough and then NPAs will start uh, going up again. But uh, uh, the peak when it reaches, my firm belief is it will be below the 11.2% that we saw in March 18, uh, while the cycle uh, will continue. So one area where we need to watch out for is the retail uh, segment, how uh, the asset quality pans out. Uh, we are seeing some, uh, uh, I would say, uh, monitorables as far as the unsecured loans, especially the low ticket, uh, small ticket unsecured loans are concerned. But as of now, the proportion in the overall mix is still low. So we need to see how that pans out. On the corporate loan book, we do still expect uh, some amount of uh, decline in the NPAs because corporate India has largely deleveraged itself with median ge gearing and the crystal rated portfolio coming down to around 0.45x uh, as compared to around 1.1x around eight years back. So there's more than halving of the leverage which has happened. So that uh, means that corporate India's balance sheets are looking uh, re uh, quite healthy. So uh, not much of a uh, probability of NPAs going up there. But on the retail side, we are monitoring the situation, especially on the unsecured front. All right, final question then before we let you go, Krishnan. Uh, what is the credit growth that you're factoring in for the next fiscal? At the same time, if you could, you know, give us uh, what sectors are best placed to benefit from this. Is the private sector banks? Is the private sector smaller banks? Is the private sector larger banks? PSUs, etc. If you could give us the nature of, uh, you know, the banks or financial institutions which are best placed to benefit. Sure. So this fiscal overall uh, banking sector credit growth, our prognosis is a 14% uh, credit growth. Uh, it, it was close to around 16% last fiscal. So we are looking at a 14%. Uh, base was uh, higher last uh, fiscal. Uh, and uh, we expect the GDP growth the macro pro, uh, projections also to be somewhat lower than the 8.2% that we looked at last fiscal. Our projection is 6.8% for this fiscal. So that will lead to some uh, bit of a slower uh, GDP uh, bank credit growth as compared to last fiscal. But that 14% is still a very healthy trend. Overall, I would say that the banking system is reasonably well-placed today in terms of their credit health. I look at the three core parameters, which I call as the ACE, A-C-E, that is asset quality, capitalization, and earnings. On all those fronts, if I look at the past trend, uh, we see that on all these parameters, uh, banks are, are uh, quite well-placed. And if we look at uh, the standalone profile in terms of either asset quality or capital adequacy or earnings, uh, we see the private banks are somewhat better then the large private banks are looking better than the public sector banks. But the public sector banks have are showing in terms of an improvement. The improvement trajectory uh, is better in the public sector banks. So we see overall the large private banks, the credit growth should be higher uh, than the systemic average. Uh, public sector banks will be ca catching up there. One of the key monitorables uh, we need to also look at is how the deposit growth will pan out. 
What we have been seeing in the last, uh, say, one and a half uh, years or so is that the deposit growth has been lagging the credit growth. Uh, but there okay. has been some pickup uh, recently as interest rates have uh, gone up. So deposit growth is an area which needs to keep up for the credit growth uh, to, to uh, kind of be at uh, these levels. All right. Okay. All right, Krishnan. We're going to leave it on that note. Pleasure speaking with you. Thanks very much for joining in and giving us that analysis on the banking space. We need to move uh, now 